Check this out. A beautiful set of straight teeth. No, it's not a top model's dental impression, but rather it's an ancient human's jawline. And if you think this is a rare find, think again. From the depths of the fossil record, we consistently find that our ancestors rocked a naturally perfect smile. No orthodontic intervention, no braces, no extractions, no retainers. Yet today, dental offices are booming with clients seeking solutions to crooked teeth and problematic wisdom teeth, with the American Orthodontic Association stating that over over a third of children need comprehensive treatment and another third needing mild treatment. So the big question, what on earth happened? And how did we end up trading these chiseled jaws for crowded mouths and smaller faces? And here is where it gets more mind blowing. Did you know our petite jaws might be compromising more than just our smiles? There's evidence suggesting they might be affecting our very life expectancy. I'm Dr. Mike Mew, an orthodontist and orthotropist and the inventor of mewing and today we're diving deep into a story that traces back millions of years unraveling the mystery behind our ancestors teeth and more crucially we'll explore if we can in the age of soft diets and fast food reclaim not just our ancestors smile but possibly add more breaths to our lives ready to chew on this let's dive in How have our teeth changed over millenniums? To unravel this dental mystery, we must first travel back in time, far beyond any recorded history. Ancient skulls, whether they're 500, 5,000, or even 50,000 years old, presented us with a startling consistency. Nearly all exhibited straight teeth, wide jaws, and room for all the wisdom teeth. And no, they didn't have orthodontists back then. Our distant ancestors survived a subsistence lifestyle, one that involved immense amount of chewing, rough, raw, unprocessed foods. We're talking about chewing up to a third of the day for four to eight hours, a stark contrast to today's total average meal time of about 20 to 30 minutes, often with precious little hard chewing. Because of this, their teeth show extensive wear and flattening, unlike the teeth we have today. This constant workout for the jaw led to more robust jawbones and larger teeth, both well equipped for their dietary demands. We all eat processed food. Either we have it processed by machinery for us, or we process it ourselves with our own inbuilt processing unit, namely our face. The more you use this unit, the stronger and better defined it becomes. However, with the advent of tools and the discovery of fire, the prehistoric menu took a pivotal turn. Cooking not only made food more palatable, but also softer, reducing the need for heavy duty chewing. Yet this culinary leap didn't immediately alter our dental structure. About 12,000 years ago, the dawn of agriculture started. That set the stage for a seismic shift. Shift. In the pursuit of making foods in greater quantities and more easily edible, our ancestors domesticated plants to make them softer, tastier, and produce higher yields, as well as domesticating animals to make their meat softer and grow fatter. Farming led to a diet more reliant on processed and refined grains, like wheat being processed into white flour or taking the German bran away from rice, so it's just the polished seed, further softening the human diet. With less demand for chewing, our jaws began to shrink. Fast forward to the Industrial Revolution. Technological advancements in food processing meant the laborious milling process could be done in seconds. Slowly but surely, things started to get canned and bottled, and compared to the fibrous feasts of our forebearers, our meals were becoming mush. High society fashion trends were also pushing foods to become smoother and softer, as these traits were seen as more luxurious. The more processed your food, the richer you probably were. In a relatively short evolutionary time span, our jaws downsized significantly, but our teeth size didn't change. That's why me and my father believe that the real reason teeth go crooked is because the jaws have grown too small. And so with the limited space the teeth have to grow, they end up jostling each other out of place, creating crowding. Evidence of diet causing crooked teeth. 
In my early days as an orthodontist, we were taught to believe that environmental factors had minimal impact on growth. The predominant view was that the genetics played the starring role, much like the reasons behind varying hound or foot sizes amongst people. The prevailing thought was simple. Sometimes jaws grow correctly, other times they don't, and it's largely the role of the genetic dice. However, evidence, particularly when we compare modern skulls with ancient ones, paints a different picture. Examine an ancient skull and you'll find nearly 99% chance of straight teeth. Also, you will find their chins are past their forehead line, while today's chins are mostly recessed and behind the forehead line. It's a clear indication that the dental irregularities are a modern affair. This pattern isn't exclusive to humans. Look around at the 5,400 different mammalian species in the wild, and you'll find virtually none with crooked teeth. This stark contrast underscores a crucial point. Dental misalignment in humans is less about natural genetics and more about evolutionary shifts, especially those related to diet. Weston A. Price, in his seminal work, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, documented the stark dental health disparities between indigenous tribes on traditional diets and those who had adopted westernized processed foods. The findings were startling. Within just one generation of dietary shift, the malocclusions became commonplace. With each subsequent generation, the incidence skyrocketed. 50% in the first generation of people on industrialized foods had malocclusion. And after about 60 to 70% in the next generation, after that 80%. And after that, which is now what we find, about 90%. Today we're seeing the culmination of these changes. Tooth crowding is prevalent, affecting an estimated 30 to 60% of the population, with less than 5% having ideal occlusion. Yet this trend isn't uniform globally. It varies significantly across regions, further emphasizing the role of the environment, particularly dietary factors. Even our primate cousins demonstrate this. In a 1983 study, scientists raised half a set of squirrel monkeys on diets of either naturally tough or artificially soft food. Those fed softer foods had more crowded premolars, rotated or displaced teeth, and narrower dental arches. What can we do to stop jaw shrinkages? The ripple effects of our changing jaws and dental structures reach far beyond aesthetics, instigating a cascade of health implications that resonate with every breath we take. Our ancestors, robust, jawed, and wide-faced, rarely, if ever, encountered the breathing issues prevalent today. The modern human smaller jaws means not just crowded teeth, but we also feel have constricted their airways, making conditions like sleep apnea, snoring, and other respiratory complications far more common. Alarmingly, the standard orthodontic practice might be exacerbating the issue. The prevalent approach has often been to extract teeth to accommodate to our smaller jaws, essentially solving the symptom while potentially worsening the root cause, possibly making a reduced airway and essentially making a small mouth smaller. My father, John Mew, recognized this issue early on. He saw the traditional orthodontics often failed to address and sometimes even contributed to these fundamental problems. This realization led to the development of orthotropics. Orthotropics diverges from conventional methods by focusing on guiding the growth of the face and jaws. Using devices like palatal expanders, it's possible to encourage horizontal growth, creating more room for the teeth and, crucially, enlarging the airway. And all of this without the need for invasive surgery. Beyond orthotropics, there's mewing, a technique I developed. It's a simple but potent concept, proper tongue posture. By pressing the tongue against the roof of the mouth, individuals can promote natural growth and alignment over time. It's more than an orthodontic technique, it's a lifestyle change, but aimed for holistic improvement that children and relatively young adults can use. There will be a link to a video on how to mew and my mewing app to learn how to become an expert mewer. The changes are gradual but remarkable, and not just in the mirror, but in the quality of life. Improved breathing, better sleep, and enhanced overall health, all from understanding and respecting our natural anatomy. The journey of our species 
species. From the ancient past to modern civilization is inscribed in our bones, our teeth and our health. By realigning our approach to orthodontics with the lessons from our ancestors, we're not just straightening teeth, we're reclaiming our health. You may also be wondering, not only did our ancestors have straight teeth and well-constructed faces, but also weren't their teeth white and did they seem to have no cavities? Hmm, quite possibly. That you'll find out next week.